Hello everybody, today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm doing my usual speed paint, but instead of like internet or arts related commentary, I'm actually going to tell a story. This is a true crime story pertaining to Anatoly Moskvin and his dolls. Spoiler alert, those aren't dolls. <laughs> Before getting into it, of course, I need to make a little disclaimer. Uh, first of all, everything in this video I have found on the internet, whatever I'm explaining to you is facts or alleged according to articles about Moskvin or from Moskvin himself. And of course, this contains sensitive material, some of which involves death and murder and one particular story that involves harm to a child. So this is content that is not suitable for all listeners and viewer discretion is advised. Without further ado, this is the story of Moskvin's dolls. Around 2009, police were getting reports of various graves around Nizhny Novgorod in Russia being desecrated. For two years, police investigated these desecrations with no idea as to who or why these graves were being desecrated. Police suspected the culprit had to have been part of an extremist organization. The police force was beefed up and units specializing in extremist crimes were brought on to further the investigation. Investigations finally became fruitful in 2011. How this investigation came to a head is different according to different sources, but one version of events I've heard makes the most sense, and is as follows. In January of 2011, and forgive me with this pronunciation here, Domodedovo International Airport suffered a terrorist attack. The attack was a suicide bombing, which the Russian Federal Investigative Committee later identified as a 20-year-old from Caucasus. Ca 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 I'm not sure. The attack, as well as other prior similar terrorist attacks, were alleged to have been towards the USA, Russia, Britain, and Israel for oppressing Muslims. Following the terrorist attack, Muslim graves became the target for desecration. Investigators were led to a cemetery where pictures of dead Muslims were being painted over. Nothing else was damaged. Presumably, investigators waited for their culprit, who on unexpectedly turned out to be a 45-year-old Anatoly Yudovich Moskvin. By now, you may be wondering where these quote-unquote dolls come in. Police, after apprehending Moskvin at the Muslim cemetery, decided to check his apartment for more information. What police were not expecting to find at the residence shared with his parents, mind you, were the alleged 29 dolls. This number changes depending on where you read it. 26, 25, I'm just gonna stick with 29. All around his apartment. These dolls contain the remains of real deceased girls, allegedly ranging in age from 3 to 25 years old. Those numbers also vary, some sources saying older in age to younger in age. The most realistic I am presuming is the 3 to 12 years old. They found maps of cemeteries and instructions on how to build his quote-unquote dolls. He would dig up graves, take these girls home, stuff them with their clothes and other items, put masks on them, and put them on display. He put music boxes inside of their rib cages so that they would sing to him when he touched them. He had tea parties with the girls, he had a calendar of their birthdays, which he would throw parties for and celebrate with. In total, it is said that he stole the bodies of 150 girls in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia. Some sources say he also had photographs of nameplates taken from headstones. Their man he had in custody was not some extremist. He was not some man out to inflict harm on anyone, i.e. Muslims in specific, but was a man with peculiar obsessions. The community around him was completely shook. No one expected this man, who is dubbed a genius, to have been doing any of this. For 10 years at least, quite possibly more, Moskvin was carrying out his hobby. He was an expert in Celtic studies, a historian, mastered 13 languages, was a professor, and is the author of many books and academic pieces. Not someone that the community would suspect of being some crazy grave robber. He claimed his obsession was born either from his parents bringing him to cemeteries as a young kid, or one particular event that reoccurs in many articles and stories about him. This story, supposedly, takes place when he was about 12 or 13 at the funeral of an 11-year-old girl, Natasha Petrova. Men in black suits allegedly forced young Mosvin to kiss the corpse of Natasha. He kissed her, then kissed her again and again. The mother put rings on her daughter and Mosvin's fingers as if some weird marriage had taken place. If this story is somehow actually true, my theory is 
This grieving mother was trying to cope with the unexpected death of her young daughter and wanted to give her daughter somehow the luxury of experiencing a marriage. I, I'm of course unsure. Either way, this began his otherworldly obsession with the dead, burial rituals, cemeteries, and the occult. He claims he began exploring cemeteries in the seventh grade. He was said to have explored 752 cemeteries in between 2005 and 2007 alone. He walked 20 miles a day, saying he occasionally slept in farmhouses or hay bales, drinking rainwater out of puddles on his expeditions. He even slept inside of a coffin where a funeral was going to take place later on. He knew the cemeteries in the area better than any person could ever hope to be, and he was proud of this. Why snatch these girls from their graves? I'm sure one would presume that he is partaking in some rather unholy activities, if you know what I mean, but instead he treated them genuinely as if they were his own daughters. He was said to be a recluse, unmarried, and uninterested in sexual activity. He tried to adopt a daughter of his own, but was denied due to being unmarried, and some other sources said he was denied due to a low income. Instead, he adopted his own 29 girls out of grace. While morbid, some may assume it's ultimately harmless, and the guy's just off his rocker, so to speak. He was deemed unfit for trial due to his mental health and was put into a psychiatric facility. In recent years, the idea of him being free to go was tossed up. Mother of Olga, and forgive me on this pronunciation again, Chardimova, Chardimova, I'm unsure. One of the dolls found in his apartment has a completely different opinion. Natalia Chardimova believes he deserves a more severe punishment, where Muskvin defends his own actions, claiming, you abandoned your girls in the cold, and I brought them home and warmed them up. <laughs> this was a blow to the mother, whose daughter was taken from her due to murder. Olga was 10 years old, arguing with her parents, trying to convince them that she was old enough to walk by herself to her grandmother's apartment in the block next door. Her mother relented, and the girl went out by herself for the first time, and also the last time, never to be seen again alive. A drug addict waiting in the lobby of their complex stole earrings from her and cracked her over the head with a metal pipe when she tried to escape. The girl was missing for five months, and was later finally located on the top floor attic, wedged in pipes. She was buried in October of 2002. After erecting a fence around her grave, her parents began painting it. When they came back the next day, the mother felt something was off, as if someone had been there. She noticed the wreath had been moved, and claims that she would continue to be tormented for another nine years. He wrote letters, leaving them for Olga on her grave, signed D.A., meaning Dolby Angel, or kind angel, like he was some sort of savior or something. He congratulated her on every holiday, from the first day of school in September down to the last school bell of the year in May. He kept track of what grade she was in. Each new year, the parents would discover their daughter's grave decorated and included stuffed animals stolen off of other graves in the cemetery. They feared what they would find when visiting her grave each time. He would dress her in his letters as little lady, as if she was still alive. Happy last month of your sixth year in school, for example. Later, he threatened the parents parents in a note that if they didn't erect a great monument that she deserves, he would dig out her body. In June 2003, they erected a proper headstone for her. On this new headstone, he took it upon himself to pen messages all over it, and then took an axe to the headstone. The couple reported this to police, who said unfortunately there wasn't much they could do about it. I had her for 10 years. He had her for 9, the mother relents. Police opened her grave to have found her body missing. Over and over again, the parents experienced grief of their murdered daughter. Muskvin, who thought he was some sort of savior, brought upon pain over and over again to an undeserving couple. Psychiatric evaluation found that Moskvin suffers from paranoid schizophrenia. He genuinely believed that the children could be brought back to life by their black magic or better science advancements down the road. He sympathized for them. In his tenure studying Celtic culture, he learned that ancient druids slept on the graves of the dead to communicate with their spirits. He took it upon himself afterwards to then sleep on the graves to determine if the children wanted to come back to life. He claimed he would never dig up a grave without the permission from the child within it. He began bringing the corpses home with him when he became too old and physically pained by sleeping on the graves, hoping the spirits would be more willing to speak in a safe, warm, welcoming home. He feared the remains would be too decayed and ugly for them to feel comfortable and happy, so after mummifying the remains, he would deck them out, so to speak, which also helped them look like dolls and helped Mossman evade detection. This includes his parents, 
who had no idea the dolls in the apartment were real bodies and anything more than a strange hobby. He knew what he was doing was illegal, but felt the dead children wanted to be rescued and valued that over the law. He spoke to, interacted with, sang songs to, watched cartoons with, and held parties with these dolls he viewed as his own children. As of today, Moskvin continues to be in a psychiatric facility. <laughs> So that's Moskvin's Dolls. I hope you enjoy. Please give me your thoughts. What do you think of the story? Do you enjoy this type of thing? Do you not enjoy this type of thing? If you have any questions, comments, concerns about the art in the video, of course, more than welcome to share those. My social media links and such will be available on screen and in the description below. And if you may or may not already know, I've been working on a manga, which I will release full chapters online for free on webtoon when they eventually are finished. I'm only going to post them when the entire chapter is done at a time, but as pages are completed, I will be uploading them to Patreon, which I just cleaned up for the first time in 5,000 years. I dusted it off and have changed some things, so for the lowest tier, $2, you can view those pages early if you'd like. There's other things as well. I'd recommend you go check them out, especially if you're an artist looking to learn, and yeah! Give me a follow, give me a subscribe, that'd be awesome, and I'll check you guys out in the next one. Thanks, bye!